Good morning. Good morning, guys. Jason with JW Classic BW. <clears throat> I'm operating on Dunkin' Donuts coffee right now because I'm tired. <laughs> Let's get all the pistons on and the cylinders on and then set the deck height. So, well not the deck height, sorry, the uh, the geometry, rocker arm geometry. We gotta cut some push rods today. I couldn't put them on last night because I didn't have any of this Permatex. So, I got my Permatex and it's time to, to get after it. So, enjoy. Time lapse time. <laughs> Talk to you guys later. In position, so what we have over here is part of the uh, geometry setup is having to get the the feet right and where they where the feet land on the valve stems all right both of them here last night when i was messing around with it the rockers actually lined up really good with the uh the feet and where they were so you want to talk about are these feet right here on the rocker how they line up with the, uh, the valve stems. These have lash caps on already, and these lash caps, I've, you know, they got a little uh, assembly lube on them to help out with the uh, rotation. I already know that I'm gonna probably have to start off with at least um, the 1.40 millimeter um, shims. Also got the uh, 0.70. 0.70 and uh, 0.32 shims. This is for the shim pack here from CB. It is so that you can take your rockers and change out the shims in between here to be able to get your feet centered up on the lash caps. But like I was telling you, the um, we're pretty good on that. The first thing you want to do on your uh, rocker arms is uh, tighten them all the way up in and then go a half turn and lock out the nuts. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that on all of mine. So, oh yeah, these are my, my my new push rods. These are from CB2, they're chrome molly. They already got one end terminated and you just have to go ahead and cut them to length. Put the other one on there. Right now they are a little bit longer than the stock. But I don't know where we're, we're gonna be cutting them yet. Before you cut your, uh, before you cut your push rods, what you do is you mark the ends with some black marker, like this, and then you'll you'll etch in or scratch in your your cut point where you're going to be cutting, so that you know. And then you'll clean it all off after the fact. I'll just let that one dry up right now. Okay, so like I was saying, I'm going to back this off. These are all pretty uh, pretty loose. 13 millimeter. Yeah. So. Ooh, tight. That one was tight. Loose. Okay, so we take our, our adjusters here. All the way in. Let's see. I need to look for this uh, Allen wrench. Okay. So a half turn out, which is not very much at all. I think really fits in there. I might jack this thing up or something. I'll probably jack that one up. It's perfect in that one. There we go. So I have to turn out. Let's uh, mark it. So we just want that on the other side. Ooh. Have to turn out and lock it down. Preset is done. 
Now I would told you when I would put the shim on here, the, uh, the 0.04, not 0.04, but a 1.4 millimeter shim. So zero, 1.4, I, I kind of do it with a pressure on it because that's what it's going to be when it's clamped down. Mode. So that's about fifty-five thousandths. So we have the adjust. <clears throat> I have the adjuster that came with the kit. I'm gonna go ahead and drop this on number uh, number two's intake, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and set it down right now. I think that that is what we consider stock. Or stock height. Yeah, that's that's about stock height. These aren't stock uh, push rods, but they're stock height push rods. So that's stock height right there. And we can go ahead and start with that to take a look and see what we have to adjust. We are going to do a zero lash with the push rod. So we're going to bring the push rod in right now and we're going to do an adjustment to get the zero lash. You can use the, uh, the bigger one, the bigger uh, nuts that you find for the head. It actually gets you a little bit more clamping force. That's a little bit of information from uh, VW Dern. He said that in one of his videos, so that's pretty cool. I got them, so I'll use them. Go. Uh, put, put a little preload on there. Okay, I'm going to put a lot of preload on here. Because this thing's getting ready to go down. Pretty good angle right there. So you put a preload because you got to put a preload on there to get your measurement. Once you have it where you want it, you can use this adjuster to zero it, you know, exactly where you want it to be. So now I have it set to zero. I'm going to pay attention to where my, uh, pay attention to the actual uh, lift. We're looking for a number. We should get the 530, 530 lift, and then we'll know that we need the, uh, the um, the half lift. Well, we're just confirming that right now. And if you guys don't know already, zero lash is where you have no play. You know, normal adjustment on a Volkswagen is is six thousandths lash. Zero lash is where you've got no play in the rocker at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that. It's no play in the rocker, but you should be able to still spin the uh, the push rod. And that's where we are right now. Cool. See what we get. <laughs> this is why it takes so long, man, because uh, you know, you're just playing with this stuff, trying to figure figure out where everything's supposed to be. So, there's one, two, three four, five, five, ten, twenty, thirty, ooh, that was close, five thirty-ish, five thirty-ish, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and we're at the bottom, and what I like to do when I'm at the bottom, full adjustment there, is I like to bring my zero back around and then uh, go ahead and check it again. So I'm gonna ring back to zero. And let's check the lift on the way back up again. So let's pay attention. One time, two, oh, shit. <laughs> it broke quite a me. Take it back down. Pay 
AC visor went off too. It's a rough, rough idea, guys. This is the exact science of this is, is difficult to say, you know, with, with what we're doing in the garage. Okay, zeroed out. I'm gonna try to keep a grip on this thing. The springs is what's pushing me off. These springs are strong. So there's one. There's two. There's three. Four. Five. Ten. Twenty. Thirty. So we're looking for two sixty five. Half lift of two sixty five. Reset our zero. Two sixty five. One, two, that's two, ten, twenty, thirty, forty, fifty, sixty five, two sixty five. And yes, I would say that our rear adjuster needs to come way up. This foot, it needs to be closer to the top of the deck here because right now you can see that you're, well, you can't really see from there, can you? Let's see if I can get you guys better. This angle's not much better, but here's where we are. So we're at 265. And the top of your uh, your lash cap, you can see where it is, right? You kind of want to have your your adjuster in the back at the same height as your lash cap. So we need to put spacers in here to get this up. So that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and do that. Let me go ahead and bring this back up. Get tension off. All right, guys. Jason, back at you. So as you can see, I end up having to use. A hundred thousands of a spacer or a hundred thousands worth of shims. I'm gonna have uh, one solid shim made up to replace that eventually, but uh, I don't have that right now. So to get it running and get it on the road, we're gonna go ahead and use the uh, the three shims, which that's that's a bunch. That's a bunch of shims. The uh, push rods. I'm in the midst of cutting those, as you can see. I'm about to mark the other side and then cut those and get them set up and ready to go. Be back at you in a little bit with uh, an update. Okay. Time to put this doghouse cooler on. It goes like this. That's where it goes. Gotta put the get seals on here. Let's get those doghouse seals. Show you that go. Does it really matter? I don't think that really matters which way it goes. No. So yeah. Starting to starting to shape up. Starting to shape up. Worth of space on this thing, it's crazy. Alright, get you guys up out of here for now. I'm gonna do a final torque on the heads too. Go back around and do the uh, 23 foot pounds as a final, final torque. I think I retorqued it. This will be the third time. Yeah, the third time. 
We've got a flywheel to put on. We got end play to check. All kinds of goodies to do. 23 pounds. Here we go. Here's what we get. These are uh, a multi-piece push rod that uh, actually... Where my knife at? Don't give the guy a knife, are you crazy? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, the Russians. Stainless steel. Pretty fancy. Wood. Wood. Now I do put a little bit of oil on these two before I put them uh, onto the engine. I think oil kind of like stops the wheel. I don't know if that makes sense. So, what do we got? So we have the outer. I've got a couple of rings. Go here. Tight, very tight fit. This is what's supposed to stop the oil from leaking in between them or in between the two sealed units. It's a multi piece push rod, too. So, take a little bit of this lube. I mean, just a little bit. You know, this it's a squirt. I'm gonna run that around the o rings. Jay, you got an injury, man. My finger's falling off. Yep. Where's that washer go? Washer goes at that end. Probably should put that spring on first, though. Probably. Okay, that's not so, so tough. This end goes on here. Jesus. A little assembly loop here. I think you need a hammer <laughs> to get this thing to go. Crap. Little bloat, is it? Okay. That worked. I don't know if I just destroyed any o rings. So yeah, it's uh, the ring looks like it may have been injured in the process. idea. <laughs> as long as you don't destroy it. Oh boy. And then your other guys. I don't know if I like these or not. I was told that they do really well. I'm about to start calling somebody full of baloney. I'm not sure what I think about that. I guess we'll find out. I guess we'll find out if that thing leaks or not. these 
rockers in a, a final adjustment. The final, final countdown. But I think a washer is probably better than a washer. The stock have a little really thin washer on there for the uh, rocker arms. Well, I think it's pretty thin anyway. Torque on these. What is the rocker arm torque? Rocker arm stud torque. 18 foot pounds. Wow, that's pretty good. I could probably go 20 pounds on this with these bigger. Uh, Bigger nuts here. Pro Molly hardware. I think I can get away with 20. Twenty foot pounds. Let's see what we got here. We'll take it to the eighteen. This is 18 foot pounds. 18 foot pounds. No, it's already there. All right. So it's uh, 004 on the intake and uh, 06 on the exhaust. I guess that makes more sense. 004. I might be close to that already on the intake. Let's get you around. Let's get it around. Let's spin it a few times. Everything back in here. Let's put some uh, some lube on this stuff. Let's get some lube in here. Yeah, this is that Marvels. Marvels. Everybody seen the movie? Oh. Marvels mystery oil right here. Let's soak this. Soak it up, man. Let's get it working. Run it over a few times. I see valve train working. That's good. Got no binding on my springs, which looks good. All right. Let's see, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Everybody's got their top to the center trick. Mine is just a stupid pole. Ooh, that's almost it. That's gotta be close to it. That is close to it. All right, where are we? We got zero lash. Ooh, that's tight. That's good, tight's good, you know why? Because that means I got some play, I got some adjustment there. All right, top dead center. Oh yeah, man, we're right to the top. Track loose. All right. Oh, oh, 004 on the intake. And 06 on the exhaust. Easy enough. There we go. Let's lock her down. First time using these. New adjusters. Let me get that out of there, please. My finger is sitting on everything. Okay, where we at? We still good? Oh, yeah. All right. And 06. 05. 06. 06. We are definitely not there yet. This is uh, Angle's recommendation, or also known as CB Performance's recommendation. Because Angle is a camshaft made by CB Performance. If you guys didn't know already. Yeah, a lot of CB Performance's crap in my, my engine. Ooh, that's too good. Good. All right, let's rope tape back to two. We're gonna get this uh, Rock arm assembly off of here. 
to do some adjustments. Ooh. Ooh. Guys, that is a working bell train. She's in a freaking spring. She's in a holler, all right. We are almost uh, done with the long block. What? Almost done with the long block. A little bit of old school, um, the new school, um, but I think it'll fire up. I bet it'll broke in and maybe run around for a little bit. The good thing about push rods is I can replace those anytime. It's all the inside stuff that you gotta wait on. What's that, man? You got a freaking long block. I don't think, man. She's looking pretty good. Looking pretty good. Put the snozzy. Put the snozzy. Alright, guys. Let's run some spark plugs now. Um. Hey, guys. It's Jason from JW Classic VW. And you just finished watching video number four. I am coming to you today on this beautiful, gorgeous afternoon from my balcony. <laughs> we have shrubbery, guys. <laughs> uh, this video covered uh, some, some bow geometry and those new push rod tubes. Uh, didn't really go into a whole lot of detail on setting up, the, setting up those 1 to 4 uh, AA ratio rocker arms, but I'm going to go ahead and put a video out soon that will go into some real specifics on what I had to do to get the geometry right where your the face, the foot of the rocker arm and the adjuster into that rocker arm were as parallel as they need to be. If you don't have your rocker arm set up correctly, then uh, what you do is you get premature wear out in the uh, rocker shaft and or somewhere else in your valve train. So you want to make sure that, that that rocker arm geometry is correct. And that geometry includes not only the, the how parallel your rocker arm is, but also how your rocker arm is set up in relation to the, the valve stem itself. So, uh, thanks to all my new subscribers for joining, and if you haven't done it already, go ahead and hit that bell icon off to the side to subscribe to future content. Uh, I really enjoy putting these videos out for you guys. It's, it's been a journey building this big engine. It's the first one I've ever done, but uh, with all the help from other YouTubers out there, like um, Easy Jeezy and his channel, BW Darren and his channel, and uh, a few other guys out there, uh, 
those are probably the main ones though, that have also assisted in some information when it comes to building this engine. Mostly my local uh, shops have helped. Also uh, Matt, Matt Lindquist, he's also a YouTuber who's uh, given some advice. Thanks a lot, Matt. It's, uh, it's been helpful when it comes to the, uh, the heads and the, uh, the porting combination and how that was all gonna work out. If you watch the video of me cruising around in Goose, you'll see that uh, she's running great, man. Everything's going good. Uh, I upgraded my full flow oil lines. You guys saw the video on that to uh, a dash. Somebody's backing up. The backup sound. Have you ever heard one of those on a bug before? Yeah. Backing up my car. <laughs> I've, uh, I'm finally doing the, the A&M fittings. I plan on doing the AM fittings on all my breather lines too, just to, to dress up the engine and uh, so they don't pop off as well. But I haven't had any problems with the uh, those lines popping off, but the idea of one of my oil lines popping off was a little too scary. So, thanks again for joining uh, this video. The, uh, the next one, video 5, will be the last one in the series on this build. It will uh, go through the, the rest of the upright uh, assembly of the engine. And then also it will cover uh, uh, the startup, or the attempted startup. <laughs> Once again, thanks for joining. I uh, appreciate all you guys being here and uh, providing comments. If you have any comments, put them down below. If you want to email me, my email is in the description. It's just uh, jwclassicvw.yahoo.com. Uh, any questions, you can shoot me an email or put it in the comments. Uh, I also have an address now, so if you have stickers or decals you want to shoot my way, send them on over. I, I'm, I'm working on getting my decals out to you guys. I've uh, come up with a couple of different designs, and I'll, I'll probably do stickers for both. We have a big car show coming up here. It's the 29th Annual Monu Monumental Car Show over here in Seabrook, and I'll be there with my stickers. So if you're there, come on by, and I'll give you one, and, or just say hi. All right, guys, this is Jason again with uh, JW Classic VW, and I'll see you on the next one.